Hello everyone, this is Gabrielle, and in this tutorial I will be showing you guys how to do indexing. So first you'll sign in to Family Search, and once you do that your name will come up in the right hand corner. Then I will have you click on indexing. Then you will scroll down to web indexing. So indexing is a really great activity to do um, for any age, I have seen kids as young as 10 years old do this, and um, I've seen people as old as 95 years old do this. And so it's a great thing to do in your spare time, and it doesn't require um, a lot of background knowledge or a lot of research. So sometimes I like to do indexing when I want to do something that's productive, but I don't really want to do some family history research because it can take a lot of brain power and a lot of energy and a lot of time. So I'm going to show you guys how to um, index today. So as you can see over here, it tells you how many records you've indexed. Um, obviously I have done a little bit of indexing, but not a lot. And then it also shows you how many you've reviewed. So I'm going to scroll down. And here you can uh, track your progress and you can set a target. So here, if I want to make a goal that I'm going to index, you know, 15 records, then it's going to show me how many records I need to do. And then the green is myself and how many I've done. So that is a really great thing to do uh, to help you stay goal oriented. It can be fun if you want to do a family competition or a competition in your ward of who can index the most records or things like that. So I'm going to scroll up and there's also these other great tabs. You can click on overview and it really teaches you all about the basics of indexing, how to do it. It gives you a guided tour here and it tells you all the information you need to know or you can click get help and you can have somebody help you. But um, for this, we're gonna do web indexing. So here I'm gonna click find batch. And so over here on the left side is the, um, the search engine. So I am a beginner, so I would click this box to make it blue. But if you wanna go ahead and try intermediate or advanced, you can do that as well. I would really caution you not to do these unless you are a really experienced um, indexer because they are very difficult and if you want to try to do it in another language you can also do that. There is a great need right now um, for non-English speakers to be indexing records because there's a lot of English speakers that are indexing but there aren't a lot of German, there aren't a lot of Dutch, um, Mandarin. French and Ch um, Chinese, I believe, are the big needs right now. So if you speak any of those languages and you feel comfortable enough to index some records, you could try that. Um, but I would really tell everybody to start with the beginner level and click search. So over here, it has processed one um, that needs to be indexed. So I'll click index. And then it pulls up the indexing tool. So this tells us to read all of the instructions and guidelines before we do anything. So here you can see on the left side it says, should this image be indexed? So this is just saying, is this a real image of a document or is it just a blank image? Because sometimes the people that are taking the images um, accidentally submit the blank images that don't have any documents in it. So here we can see that this is a real document, so I will click yes. But if it was a no, then I can say no, it's a duplicate, or no, there's not a picture. So here I'll click yes, and then click next. So now it's asking me for the second one, is this an image? Yes. Is this an image? Yes. So what you're doing is you are looking at these images and you are just transcribing it and you're putting it into an online database so that when people search for their ancestors you know if this was my ancestor 
uh, Mr. Chand, then I could search Mr. Chand and this record would come up. So indexing is very important. So here it says surname and it's got a little asterisk so that means that it needs to be entered. Um, so here I will type in Chand and then I will fill out all of this information that is found on here. And once I do that, um, we will go on to the second image. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and fill out the information and then I'll show you what it's come to. Okay, so I have indexed this record. So I've entered all this information that is asterisked. Um, and I have pulled all that information from this. And so once I've done that, I will click next image. So then it just moves on to the second image and I do the exact same thing. And once you add all of the information, uh, some of these are a lot easier to read than others because some of them are um, like typewriters or printed and other ones are cursive and so they're a little bit harder to read. So I've indexed this record so I'll go ahead and click next. And I'll index this record um, another time but I wanted to show you guys these tools up here. So up here at the top this toolbar is really great because sometimes you just need a little bit of extra help. So here is where you click submit batch. So once I finish this third record I'll click submit and then I will have indexed three different records. Here this is if there's a blank. So let's say on this record there's no surname given um, but it's asterisked so I know I have to fill it out. I can click that that little button and it says blank. So that is good to know. Um, this one is unreadable so if you can't read it then um, have a friend or a family member or a neighbor look it over and see if they can uh, figure out what it says and if you can't together find out what it says then you can mark it unreadable. Every single time you index a record it goes to an auditor and then an auditor looks it over and reviews it and makes sure that you filled it out correctly and then once they have verified it then it is public record so if you can't read it uh, you can click this button and mark it unreadable and then hopefully the auditor and the reviewer will be able to see what it says um, because they're very trained in cursive and different languages and um, handwriting this one is added entry so um, on this last document it said that he it had his physical description and so I added his physical description um, or I can add his physical description of brown hair brown eyes six foot two um, moving on here is delete an entry if you accidentally added one this one is copy the text from the same field on the previous entry this one is, sorry, copy text from the selected field. So these are all just sh uh, key keyboard shortcuts. This one is a handwriting example. So here, um, if, if this record was in cursive, then I can see f uh, five different examples of what handwritings might look like. This has been very, very helpful to me over the last few years um, because cursive handwriting has changed and people, some, some people are very good at cursive and some people are not. And so I have used this lots of times. So this is a very important tool. And once again, it's right here, this little pen. This one is to share the batch if you want to share it with a family member or a friend or have somebody else complete it. This one is international characters. This one's very helpful if you are working in other languages. And then lastly, this is project instructions. I should have started with this, I'm sorry. Um, but this gives you the instructions just for this specific record because different regions and countries abide by their own rules and sometimes you need to um, read different things about... You need specific instructions for the specific record. And then it also has the guidelines and what to remember about this project. Um, lastly, here's a little tips section that you can um, learn about. And then if you want to, sorry, if you want to stop the batch, 
then you can always just click the back arrow and come back to it another time. I know you guys have busy lives, and so if you just want to start a record and then stop and come back to it another time, you can do that as well. Um, and I think that that is it. I want to make sure I show you guys everything. Yeah, so here you can do quality check, submit batch, return batch, settings about the batch, everything like that. So I hope that this answers some of your guys' questions about indexing. Um, don't be afraid of, of messing up because all things will be made right one day. And during the millennium, if we made a mistake, you know, back in 2020, in the millennium, we will fix it and it will all be okay. But we need people indexing records so that we can actually find records. So indexing and family search go hand in hand. We have to be doing both of them or else um, it eventually will be at a standstill where we don't have any more records to find because we're not indexing records. So I hope that you guys find time to do this and that you make time to do this because it's super important. And it's not as hard as family search or family history research. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope if I have uh, done a good job, I hope you guys will give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, let me know and drop in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Bye.